Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Women Your Mother Warns You About with me, Gina Tremarco, and one of my favorite guests that comes back every now and then. And by the way, she is my last guest for a while, for a while. We are evolving. I'm super excited. You'll hear about it in the next episode of what's happening to this show. She's the last guest for now, but I have a feeling she will be back on the new and improved Women Your Mother Warned You About 2.0. But today, my guest is Liz Wenling. She is a nationally recognized business consultant, sales expert, and the creator of the sales clinic. Liz combines a rock-solid sales background with a passion for coaching, and the result is powerful. New way to understand how to sell in today's crowded marketplace. Her innovative approach supports you in opening doors, closing sales, and building relationships. And I am so happy to have you back, Liz. And I'm happy to be here for the finale-ish. The finale-ish for now. For now. (laughs) Keep the intrigue going of what's that. We're not going off the air. We're just making some fun changes. But you and I have been talking back and forth over LinkedIn. And I love this topic that you suggested is the differences between serving and selling and how people need both in the process. I'm just going to lay it out there. I got lots to say, but I want to hear it from you. Well, it is true. You have to do both. And I like to think of serving and selling as the same as inhaling and exhaling. Both are critical for sustaining your life and your business. Serving and selling are interconnected aspects of the sales process. They go hand in hand. And doing one without the other is just wrong. You can't overserve, oversell. It, it just confuses people and it actually pisses people off. If you are only serving people and not helping them get the relief they came to you for, you're just aggravating them and hmm. sending them right into the arms of your competition. So, so break this down a little bit, because the other thing that you've shared with me is the don't don't sell, comma, serve mantra uh-huh. is outdated and keeps people from earning a great living. What does that mean? Oof. It means that the people who first of all, cling to and recite that old mantra, I don't sell, I serve. I am just not a salesperson. I only show up and serve people. Well, that mantra is music to people's ears who don't want to go anywhere near selling. So they hang their hat on that mantra. And for many, they decide, okay, well, I'm just going to show up and serve and I'll just make less money. I'll just serve and I won't make a great living. So that mantra to them brings up these visions of being a sleazy or a pushy salesperson trying to manipulate them. They think that's what selling is, so they avoid it. And that's not selling. If you're manipulating and pushing people, that's not selling. That's being an ass. Selling today is not sleazy when you do it in a way that not only aligns with you, but how it aligns with the way the world makes decisions today, the way the world wants conversations. So if you're not stepping into a selling and a serving situation, you're not helping anyone. You cannot separate selling and serving. It's completely intertwined. And the minute you try to separate it is the minute you send someone to your competition. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Because I was like a little scared for a second, Liz, because (laughs) I do use this phrase. So now I'm I'm thinking about how I say this. I talk about this a lot that I do. I come from a place of serve and solve. Mm -hmm. And... And I I guess I I share this with the salespeople that I train because those who are uncomfortable with the selling and I always wonder, like, why are they in their jobs? But that's another story. Right. I never saw myself in sales. I never wanted to get into sales. And I kind of fell into it because people kept beating me up that I should be selling, like Mm -hmm. beating me up in a good way of like, oh, my gosh, we want to hire you to sell. I'm like, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not going to do that. (laughs) And then finally, because I'm so curious, I'm like, why do you, mm-hmm. why are you asked? Why are you telling me I should be selling? Yeah. And every time I would get the feedback would always be, well, you're just, you're, you're just so easy to talk to. Like you're, it's, you're so comfortable to be around. I haven't actually, when we're done recording this, I'm, I get on a call where I'm going to close. I know I'm closing this deal, but it's like the fourth call they're okay. in. It's just a mm-hmm. matter of negotiation time now. And on the second call with them. So it's like the primary decision maker. He brought, two people that work with him on the call to get their Mm -hmm. buy-in. And one of the comments he said was, I just love talking to Gina. It's just always fun. 
to be talking to Gina. Right. And so that was like, I was like, wow, wow, this is how this I'm trying to sell this guy something. And that's his how he feels with me. And that's my thing. That's my secret sauce is Mm -hmm. and it might be improv related because we work in a mindset of creating a safe space for everybody, a place where you can say what you want without judgment and it's going to be safe for you and you're not going to feel harmed, which goes hand in hand with brain science and our amygdala freaking out and fight or flight and all those things. So the salespeople that I work with that are like, I don't want to be pushy. I'm like, well, just get rid of that. Yeah. I'm like, get rid of that attitude. I'm like, just show up with the mindset of you're going to serve and sell. Mm -hmm. And then selling, selling happens. Selling. I say this in comedy. We don't teach people how to be funny. Funny happens. Yeah. Right. It happens because comedy is about relatability and contrast. Sure. Right. So relatability is key. So based on that, how do you turn that around? Or what are your thoughts on what I'm saying about like, I sell and I serve and I sell. And you could call selling, solving. I don't care what you call it. Just know that you're doing it at some point. There, when people take on the serving only mindset, let's say, say, they're also taking on an energy with that. I don't always have. And you tend to show up Mm. and people don't realize this when they only serve, they show up a lot of times with the energy of a servant, not a professional equal. So there's the distinction. I only serve. I don't go anywhere near selling. I just don't do it. It's not a, not me. So now what happens is you decrease your credibility and diminish your value in the eyes of the prospect mm. because the energy you're showing up with is I'm here to serve you. I can jump through hoops. I can bend over backwards. I'm so easy to talk to. I'll stand on my head. I'll turn myself into a pretzel. I'm here to serve you. Now, this may be shocking, but not everybody wants to be served that way. They want alignment from a professional who can help guide them and help them in their decision-making process. They want a conversation between two equals. So when someone takes this serving energy too far, it kills their business and they better get used to, okay, well, let me think about it. This all sounds great. And uh, why don't you put a proposal together and we'll talk about it. And you get brushed aside because you didn't finish the process. You only served and you didn't try to help them solve their problem. For example, let's say I go to an orthopedic surgeon or a mechanic and I've got a torn ligament or I need a transmission. If both of these people only talk to me about, well, tell me about your problem. Where does it hurt? Does it hurt when you're sleeping? Does it hurt when you wake up? Does your car make a lot of noise? And you just keep asking me all these questions. Or you say, let me put you in my sales funnel. Or you know what? Let me send you a couple of videos. I'll show you what it looks like to have the surgery or what it looks like to put a new transmission in. And I only serve and I don't turn around and say, look, Your ligament is 100% torn. We have got to get you in there and clean that up and put that back together. Here are the couple of options you have to be able to do that. Or your transmission is shot. You can't drive another five miles with this. So here's what I recommend. That's serving and selling. That's making recommendations. That's solving problems. But a doctor or a mechanic who doesn't go into the conversation about here's what you can do to fix it then who are you serving if you don't do that, if you don't step into that? All you're doing is what I kind of joke about is giving someone the finger by only serving. That's it. It's like, no, I can't help you. I can't give you the results that you need because I'm afraid to sell you the results I, I because I only serve. So when I get a little smart assy here, it's because this is really the energy that people are yeah. taking on. I hear it. I see it every single day. So if you're not willing to close the loop and finish the conversation and take the exhale, inhale serving, exhale selling, then you're just killing your own business. And that's why I say they go hand in hand. And I use the analogy of an infinity symbol where it's a visual representation of it. You can't tell where it starts and stops. The energy stays in perpetual motion. You're serving and selling and serving and selling all at the same time. Yes. Okay. All right. I love that. And I love the inhale serving, exhale selling. I love that. So this makes sense. It is, it's an energy. It's an energy. 
And we know that emotions are contagious. Mm -hmm. People can pick up and feel these things, feel these things. And I think when you're over serving, now that you say all this, I feel like there's a sense of like, almost like you're coming off as needy. Yes. When you're, oh, let yes. Me, let me serve you. Let me serve you. And you'll yep. love me if I keep serving you. That's right. right. And then the amygdala and the other person is like, what is wrong with this picture? Right. I say that when you're only doing one, one without the other creates an imbalance in the yeah. customer's journey. It feels you're giving off this weird energy and one without the other disrupts the harmony of a really fantastic buying experience. It puts a wrench in it because you confuse the heck out of people if you only serve and you don't solve and you don't help yeah. someone buy something from you. You're the cause of the disruption. Knock it off. Hey, listeners, just taking a quick little break, especially if you are a professional businesswoman on the brink of a new chapter ready to reclaim your confidence and seeking sisterhood that supports, empowers, and propels you forward. Look no further. The Rockstar Collaborative is your tribe, your partner, and your catalyst for transformation. Last year, I piloted this program and flexed with it until it morphed into such a transformational experience that the members asked me to keep it going. But don't just take my word for it listen to what some of our rock stars had to say. So some of them said the following things. I was inspired to join the Rockstar Collaborative with a will to better myself, to find focus in my chaotic head, to really find my voice and to figure out how to get out of my own way. Another woman said, the women in the collaborative are my newfound tribe. They are the ones that I can text or pick up the phone and call with any random question. And I know that I will get an honest answer. They're going to let me fail and catch me and then help propel me forward. Another one said, if I had to describe the Rockstar Collaborative in three words, they would be empowering, embracing, and all around badass. This is a space that I truly love to be part of, helping other women in business on more of the personal side of things that is going to have an impact on how you do business and how you do life, honestly. So are you ready to be part of a bigger community? Won't you join us? Come and unlock your brilliance and discover the power of sisterhood and collaboration at the Rockstar Collaborative, where women come together to support, uplift, and empower each other. Our community is a blend of diverse, high-performing individuals who share a common goal, personal and professional growth. You know, it's hard to have it all, but you can learn how to have some kind of blend of all of it. The next six months program is starting soon. Enrollment is now open and limited to only 12 rock stars. So if you're ready to shine bright, foster your confidence, reinvent yourself and make a positive impact on other women, don't miss this chance. Visit womenyourmotherwarnedyouabout.com and look for the Rockstar Collaborative tab under the tab for helping women rock on. I think two years ago, this is quite some time ago, maybe 15-ish years, when that might have been like when I got my first coach. And I got my first coach to expand at that time my improv business on the corporate side of what we Mm -hmm. were doing. I'm like, how? And it was so interesting because in that first experience, which was a mastermind group for the first thing I did, Everybody there in that program, primarily women, they were all coaches of some kind, right? Mm-hmm. There's a coach for everything. Right. And I'm tr- I was trying to grow the corporate side of my business. And I, looking back, I know like it was not a good alignment, but of being in that program. And yet it served me down the road to where I am today. The feedback I got was, oh, so you're, they, the, I don't think they knew how to help me grow the oh. scale, the corporate training side of it. Right. Mm-hmm. They really focus on helping women build their coaching businesses. And this is back in the day was like, OK, so you're going to get on a call. And so every we're going to teach you coaches how to like 
you're going to do a discovery call. And that's what they were called, right? Like that was the first time I heard the word, you're going to do, you're going to give them free discovery calls and you're going to give them your expertise for free. And then they, they'll turn into customers. Right. And I did that for a minute and I'm like, this is exhausting. I'm doing all these free calls and giving away my expertise. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, maybe coaching will be a good supplement to the business. Okay, I'll tr- I'll try it. I mean, yeah. that's good. And, and granted, it was. It's how I got into coaching. So I'm super, super thankful for it. And so I see things differently now because even mm-hmm. when I'm selling training, I always sell training with a coaching component to it. So yeah, I would have that yeah. would have never have happened. Mm-hmm. So it it was really interesting to me because there was this energy in the room all the time of this desperate neediness of like, I'm on these discovery calls and they're not buying and I'm spending all my time on these calls. That's that weird energy showing up and nobody that, buys that weird energy. They say, thank you for your information. You've been great, Gina, but I'll call you in a couple of weeks. And then you're ghosted completely. And then people blame the cl- the potential client. I can't believe they never got back to me. Can you believe that I would give away all of my best stuff and they blew me off. Yeah, I know why. I totally know why. Yeah, because you're like, I'm, I'm going to give you all this good stuff and then yep. you're going to you're just going to buy. Yes. And I subscribed to it for a second, saw that it didn't work, didn't like it. And then I was doing a I did one of those. This is back in like guru coaching days. I know it's still going on, but it was like the height of guru, like have a three day event and then sell from the back of the room and sell from the stage and blah, 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 blah. And so I throw a three day event in Chicago and I spend forever trying to fill it. And I like got a small attendance and there was somebody there who came up to me and said, you know why you're not, you know why no one's buying from you? Like she was observing it. Yeah. Like you're so out of alignment. It, it was beautiful. Yeah. She's like, you're so out of alignment. You are trying to sell like a guru and you're not. Meaning I I didn't have that persona, a Tony Robbins. Mm-hmm. Meaning I'm not the one like, come on, you can do this. Let's <laughs> gonna do this. Don't you want to get better? Stand up on your chair. Come on. <laughs> right. Which is not my style. Right? right. So I actually, I spent time with her, um, coaching with her. As a result, it's awful <laughs> because she brought me through this marketing alignment grid and a discish kind of thing, but okay. it was showing you from a selling style where you fall. And what we found with me is that I was really a truth guide, is what it was called. And that truth guide is not the guru, the truth guide is the one who walks you down the path right next to you and says, Hey, don't do it the way I do it. Right. We have to do it the way that makes sense for you to do it. I'm going to I'm going to walk with you, Mm -hmm. but doing it the way I do, it's not going to work because you're not me. Right. And so that's the that was the area I fell in was that personality. And so that really clicked with me that I was selling out of alignment based on how everyone says you should sell. Yes. And I was failing. And it's all the stuff people hate about, quote unquote, selling. They hate what selling used to be, not the way selling is today. So they're hanging their hat on the old stuff, thinking they have to do that in the new world. And that's where that misalignment comes in. And they're bumping up against something that is truly holding them back. Right. And you know what? And there's an audience for the Tony Robbins and all of that. Absolutely. There's an audience for them. But if you're not a Tony Robbins, don't try to be if you're not a Jeb Blunt, don't try to be a Jeb Blunt like don't try to be those things. Correct. Be who you are, the audience that that you'll attract that audience. Yes. But again, that was sort of my story on the serving. And so, so my my MO typically, like I'm super transparent, right? Whenever I'm doing a discovery call or a proposal call, even today I had a call with it's a long sales cycle. I, I don't probability of, I don't know, two percent, maybe. Mm. It's been a long process. They've had organizational changes. I want to write it off, but my attitude is like, maintain the relationship. You don't know. Right. And so even in the call today, like I, I confirmed with him the meeting. He messaged me back. Yeah, no one's coming with me on this meeting because I asked him to bring decision makers. Mm-hmm. No one's coming with me because we've had this org change. 
We're not going to move forward on training in Q1 because we got these things going on. Coaching is probably going to come down the road, but nothing's happening right now. And I was like, Mm. cool, okay, okay. I mean, he shared that with me, but still wanted to meet with me. Yeah. And even in that call, I said, hey, I'm not expecting you to write me a check today. Right. Right. Like, and and like we scheduled our our next meeting. Just I'm like, let's just check in. I know you won't have a check then either. Right. Right. But I'm up front. I'm up front now with all of my calls. Hey, we're getting together today for the next half an hour. I want to learn about you and your business, your goals. And then I'm going to walk you through solutions we possibly have. I'm not sure if there'll be a fit. And at the end of the call, you're going to let me know if you want to work with us or not. That's what people want. They just want you to be up front, not somebody else. Be yourself. Be up front. Be transparent. Have a great conversation. Serve and sell. Strike a great balance and watch what happens to your business. Knock this crap off that selling is something harder or disgusting that you have to do in your business. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Does every single business stays in business because somebody is selling something and somebody is buying something? Knock it off. And that's why I am screaming this from the rooftops. I tell you, Gina, if you Googled serve, don't sell, or should I serve instead of selling? I don't know. There's 30 billion people saying, yes, serve, don't sell. So I think I'm the only one on the planet right now saying you need both. You know what? I I bet you the I bet you the majority of those saying serve don't sell. Yes, are, are coaches trying to sell their program? That's it. On to how people, to not sell <laughs> to people who don't want to sell. Oh, there's a silver bullet. I'm going to buy that program. Yes. That's so, exactly, they're staying in business, but <laughs> the only people staying in business are the people selling you on sell without selling or sell, <laughs> so don't sell. Yes, they're staying in business. So that's the most manipulative type of sales. Yeah. It, you're buying into what you don't want to be. So you're buying sell without selling from an, someone who I would say is trying to manipulate you and then you're going to be manipulative. So how is that serving? I don't get it. it the it's whole, it's 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 yeah. like the it's the silver bullet. It's like selling a diet fad. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, you, that I'm going to just take that pill and uh, I'll lose all the weight and I got to do nothing else. That's okay. right. Yeah, I'll do I'll that. I'll take it. Yep, I want the quick fix. So I always joke and say that when you're over serving and only serving in your business, think of when you get over served in a bar. Right. (laughs) You just keep serving drinks and serving drinks. You have a drunk customer in front of you who makes crappy decisions, no decisions at all. And you don't it doesn't go anywhere. You just throw them in a cab and send them home. And that's exactly what's happening in your business. If you just keep serving and serving, people don't make decisions or they make bad decisions because you didn't help them buy the right decision. And then they get in the cab and they go take it there. They get in the cab to your competition because your competition is willing to have those conversations with you yeah. and sell you something. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I also use sort of analogy on that, too, with like overeating and you feel full. Yeah. Right. I feel full. Same when salespeople will talk too much or talk past the sale. And it's like, let me dump all this information on you. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. And I'm like, your brain is like your stomach. If you overfill your stomach, you're going to throw up. Yes. If you overfill the brain, it will shut down. Completely. Right? Like, I don't know about you, but there are days I run so hard. I canceled my last appointment of the day today. Now, granted, it's with my publisher, so it's not mm-hmm. with a client. But I canceled my last appointment of the day today because I've been running so hard this week. I'm running so hard today that at the end of the day, my brain almost, right? hurts. Hey, it, it feels like it's got too much in it. Yeah. And, and good for you for acknowledging when you have to push away. <laughs> yeah. I hated it, but I'm like, this call is actually not going to be helpful because I didn't meet my writing deadline this week. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> let's just, why don't I just give my brain a break? Why don't I just stop the work day after 10 hours today mm, versus right. 12, right? Yes. So same thing brain gets overloaded and I don't and a lot of salespeople don't think about how they overload the customer with like, let me do all these things for you. Let me do backflips for you. Yeah. It has to be a give and take compromise, right? Correct. Even if oh, call, right. When I set the call, I'm like on the next call, please bring these people and I'm mm. going to bring somebody. I was going to bring someone because it's a pretty complex sale, uh-huh. multiple layers to it. Some things that are involved that are not my expertise. And I'm like, I need to bring 
someone else to this and I'm going to bring a higher level person. And I mm-hmm. told him that. And if you bring your decision makers, right, I give you this, you give me that. Right. Yeah. That's how it works. That's that infinity. We're serving and selling and you can't yeah. tell where one starts and one stops. Yeah. And we when he emailed me and said no one's coming. I'm like, OK, no one's coming with me either. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to I'm not going to over deliver. Right. On this because you didn't do your part. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and so even that person's like, oh, you took it off my calendar. And when I explain it, it goes, makes sense. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take up an hour of your time when there's going to be no deal closed on right. this call. Or and any I know movement. It. Right, right. If and there's, there's no, no movement, right. no movement. So what would be some of your recommendations? Have you put, have you created a framework and a plan around this beautiful I idea? I have a coaching program. No, no. It's mindset and skill set. It re- it really is. It's thinking first about asking yourself, am I overselling? Am I doing the activities that look like I'm, uh, over, I should say, over-serving, not overselling? Like, here, oh, I, I found this article for you. I thought you'd appreciate it. To me, I just, I roll my eyes when I see that. When When someone sends me three articles or a video or does a unique video just for me to stay in my inbox, and that to me is over serving. If I need an article on a topic that I already know or that you do and you're sending me, unless it's so relevant and I asked for it or it's really going to help me, then I know what you're doing. You are trying to serve me and say, oh, I got to stay in front of them. Up, keep, be top of mind. And you do things like that that put you in a lesser than position versus your upfront phone call that you have with someone where you actually create that collaboration, that conversation where you're, that person wants to talk to you again, wants to continue the conversation, wants to take that next step versus you thinking all those little things are going to help you get to that next step. So it all starts with a very strong, a great mindset as you go into it with some structure, like you said earlier, the way that you frame up a call and showing up with not wanting to serve or sell, but do both to be able to do what a mechanic or a doctor does. Ask those questions. Find out what's truly deeply going on, not what you want to try to sell someone. Because what I've seen when I'm doing mock role plays and things like that is the minute someone gives out a buying signal, that person goes into selling. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting under the hood and going deeper and asking questions and finding out what's really there because you might want to sell somebody something but it might not be what they need. And you can only know when you ask those questions. Yeah. Similar to the mechanic again. Does it make noises when you're driving at high speed? Does it, when you're backing out of your garage, does it click? I, they need to know that to be able to solve the problem. And a lot of times salespeople go into it and say, I don't sell, I serve. But they don't realize that they're selling and they're selling of the worst kind, meaning they're stepping in when it's not time to sell. And they don't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, and here's a funny thing. I'm so upfront, like, and I, and maybe it's part of my comedic side that I can do this. I'm like, well, I'm here to sell. We, we might not have a deal today, but I'm here yeah. to sell. Yeah. But I'm also here to provide you a solution if, right. if there is one. Right. right. And when I hear people say, oh, I'm not selling you anything today. No, put your credit card away. I wouldn't even take your money today if you tried to give it to me. Even if you don't <laughs> sound like that, that's what's coming across. No, I'm not selling. I'm not. Or I see people that will actually say, P.S., this isn't a sales call. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to sell you anything. So when you say that to someone, the first thing they think is, yes, then why the hell are we talking? I know what you're trying to do. So we've got to just dismantle this ruse out there that you only serve. If you want to make, if you want to eat, you're going to have to do both. And we've got to get clean with, I serve, I sell, I show up, I do it with my highest and best self. And if it's right and the fit is right, let's make it happen. If not, I'll send you off with a whole lot of love and nobody gets hurt. Okay. I'm going to put this on my, my, I've got this ever growing bucket list of things. And maybe you want to collaborate with me. No time soon, because I don't have time for it. <laughs> but on my bucket list, and I've just started doing this in my inbox with email, these emails, these cold emails, and these LinkedIn messages, right? I got a LinkedIn message recently that was like something along the lines of, for all the work that you do, 
in scientific engineering. So, so some something that couldn't be further away. I can't even remember what it was. Something so far away from what I do. Yeah. Right. And it's like, I just want to be part of your network. And I was like, you're so yeah. right, man. <laughs> and I go, have you read my profile? Right. And he's like, yeah. And as a scientific engineer, if I go, you haven't read my profile because I'm not a scientific engineer. You're a I, said, I, I said, whatever it is you're trying to sell me, I'm not trying to sell you. And I'm like going back and forth with him. He's like, oh. And your profile says you're trying to rehumanize things. Well, obviously, you don't know how to do that. And I said, I buy, like, look, right. like we see. Yeah, so I have started this collection. And now that I'm so aware of it, I get at least 10 cold emails a day that are ridiculous. And I, I have a collection as well. We need to have a little bucket of them. I want to actually write a comedic book Using these emails. And then I want to do the smart ass Gina remark, which sometimes they get them for me. I actually reverse engineered one of these the other day because they were trying to sell me construction materials. I don't know why. Wow. And, but I've been getting a lot of emails about construction materials. So finally, I called one of them because there's a phone number and I'm like, hey, yeah, I got your email. Um, Curious how I got on your list. He's like, oh, we buy Google lists. I go, oh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting because I'm not in construction. So I was really curious about that. I'm a, by the way, how many salespeople do you have? Uh -huh. He's like 30. I go, mm, do you guys do any kind of sales training? He's like, no. I go, who oversees the? I literally spent that call prospect. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I don't need uh, you. Don't, you need me. This right. is gold. This is gold. So I want to check these emails. Write a snarky response and then write a, this is what would sound better. Right, right. Do you want to, you want to play with me on that? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I am a replier. So even this morning, someone said to me, she said, I want the opportunity to work with you was in the subject line, thinking that she wanted to work with me, meaning hire me. But no, right, 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 right. she was selling her services and her VA services and how great she was and all the things that she can do. And it was nothing but a sales pitch. So I replied back to her. I said, it sounds like you need me more than I need you. Does this really work with 15 question mark? Seriously? You're selling me? I said, this is the most salesy and pushy email I've gotten in a long time. Permission to save this in my bucket of bad emails. And so I sent it off. But apparently, I don't know where it came from because it bounced back. So it was probably just a bot of some source. But that's the stuff that makes people think that's what selling is. And it's not. It's not. A worded, perfectly crafted email that feels like you're writing to someone, not at someone. That's how you get a response. Uh, yeah. That is it. And, and so that was going to be a, a question I wanted to ask you before we wrap up. So there is a lot out there, even in the world that I'm in as a trainer, like teaching people how to do an entire sequence of touches of send the video, send the email, send the LinkedIn, send the this, send, send the article. Let me be of value. Who can I introduce you to in my network? <laughs> right. All of those things. How do and, I serve you? Right. And so here's what I said in a training yesterday. I'm like, the things that worked yesterday don't work today because of our amygdala, mm -hmm. because we have to continuously disrupt the pattern. Right. So it worked yesterday. It might not work today. So how do we disrupt it? How do we do something different? My opinion on this, right? When you're talking about getting content in front of people, I'm working on a little bit of a Valentine's Day thing that I'm going to be doing next week for prospecting and clients, you know, for prospects and clients, just to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, you have to really think about that person, who they are, and not do your, this is part of my sequence where I'm going to send out an article to these 50 people. Right. I thought you would find this article helpful, right? And so that's when they're like, what? But what if you got super personalized, right? I'm thinking about Liz and what Liz specifically likes. When I run across something that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so Liz. Yeah. And I'm like, I just read this and it made me think about you. And you see it and you're like, oh yeah. That's where it's where the real happens. right. It's relevant. 
It's relevant. It isn't some random something dropped in my inbox for you to make me top of mind. Oh, that's right. I got a video from Sarah. Oh, maybe I'll do business with her this week. That doesn't work. (laughs) So the the whole no like and trust thing that people are trying to jam down throats to, this is my other big soapbox. It's no like and trust gets you the ticket to the game. It's not enough anymore. You must be relevant. Your messages have to be relevant to me. They have to pique my interest and get me to lean in, not back away and roll my eyes and hit the delete button. No like and trust is not enough anymore. Oh, yes. That is a great way to end this episode. No like and trust is not enough anymore. And this show has always had in the tagline, oh, we can see it behind my back. Real, raw, relevant. That's it. (laughs) And sometimes a little irreverent. So it was so awesome having you here to talk about this as the as the last guest for now. Awesome. And Thank we'll, you. But you'll be back in the 2.0 version mm-hmm. of this show. If people want to reach out to you and why wouldn't they want to? Because you are a bucket of fun, right? Like we want to work with fun people. How should people connect with you? Oh, yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn. My website is LizWendling.com. I've got some books on Amazon, YouTube. I'm out there. Just Google my name and I will show up and I've got some snarky videos out there more. (laughs) But should basically I push up against the old school and let people know, like the no like and trust thing. Everybody screams from the rooftops. No, I can trust. But nobody ever says, wait a second. Does that crap work anymore? Is that really relevant? So I like to add a little bit of my inner Jersey girl in some of those videos. I love that. I love your inner Jersey girl and my inner (laughs) Chicago girl. That's why it works. Liz, thank you so much for being here. Can't wait to have you back. Thank you, Jean. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you again to Liz and thank you to you, our listeners and hopefully viewers. You should be watching us on YouTube. To find our YouTube channel, because we don't have that vanity URL, go to womenyourmotherwarnedyoubout.com. Click on the YouTube link. It will bring you there because Liz and I have very expressive faces. So come check us out and we will see you next time. Bye.